healing, freedom, and wholeness. Well, my name is Sue Detweiler, and my goal is to help you live with more passion, love with more purpose, and lead an overcoming life. Well, today on the program, I have my friend Wade Aaron, who does just that. Wade is an evangelist that not only leads people to Jesus, but he mobilizes the church on how to walk out our faith on a daily basis and be the church out in the streets. And I just love what Wade carries. And even as we're looking forward to Easter, I just want to say to you, oh my goodness, God is so good. And there may be people outside of your, your neighborhood or on the street. Invite them to Easter. Invite them to Easter Sunday with you. Invite them to church. But more than that, be the church. Pray for the sick. Pray for their healing. Share the love of Christ. Be activated in your heart that you're going to be bold. And one of the people that I know that does that in such a beautiful way within community is Wade Aaron. So enjoy this interview. Well, today on Healing Rain, I have Wade Aaron with me. I'm glad you could be on Healing Rain today, Wade. Yeah, so excited to be here and glad you asked me to join you. You know, what I love about your heart, Wade, is you want to see Jesus in every community. You want people to know all about Jesus. And you really, uh, as you worked with Time to Revive, you've gone into different cities and you helped to, you know, build those bridges with the body of Christ to, to share. And I just want to hear some about your own healing journey. You know, how did you end up being transformed by Jesus Christ? What was the beginning point of your healing journey? Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, just kind of how the journey God has brought me on. Uh, I would say really the healing journey began when I gave my life to Christ. I, uh, I grew up in the church and I grew up in a, a church in East Texas and I I don't know. I would say to some degree, I just kind of was around, around, some people would say you're around God, you're around the message, even memorize the scriptures. But I, I realized one day that um, I didn't really know the Lord. I didn't know God. And I would say this is, this was the beginning of the shift was I made a comment to God. I said, God, either I'm going to live for you. Or I'm going to live like hell the rest of my life. And after I made that comment about a week later, through a worship song, uh, there's a worship song talking about God's love never giving up on us. And it was the first time for me, I realized how much God loved me. And I remember I was in New Mexico at the time when I heard that song and I walked down a sidewalk and I said, Jesus, I'm gonna live for you from this day forward. And I, truly, I, I've never been the same since, you know, I, I, um, <laughs> It's so crazy because you think about it like the guy that I was, you know, everyone would have said I was a good, good person, uh, you know, good, good Christian guy. Um, but I knew who I was living with on a day in and day out because kind of where I grew up was East. And I don't know, I don't know what the, the culture is to everyone that's listening or used to, but sometimes in the country, just being angry is normal. Um, <laughs> you know, it's just. You go to church, you live your life. Oh, that's, that's that guy over there. He's just angry. That's just normal, you know? <laughs> um, so, so you were uh, filled with anger more than love, you know, at that point. A hundred percent. Yeah. And, you know, I was a good, I've always been a goofy guy, but um, like I said, you know, when you're playing sports and football, especially, you know, you just go out there and you show your anger and then you blow some steam and then you, blow some more steam and then you go home and someone says the wrong thing, you blow some more steam, but <laughs> really saw. But like I said, a lot of people just kind of treat that as normal. Um, yeah. 
And I would say even really where things really shifted for me in this, this journey would have been about four years, three, not even four years, two years into my journey. I had a buddy of mine that read a first John, it says, if you stumble. Um, and I was a part of this ministry in college and man, they were just so affectionate, a group of guys that they're just so affectionate, meaning like they gave each other hugs. They loved each other. And growing up once again in the country, nobody showed affection. Nobody gave hugs. And I was like, what? what is going on here? Um, and then that friend of mine that, you know, he showed me this Bible verse. He says, man, I want you to know your new creation. And first John says, if you stumble, that means you don't have to be bound by an old lifestyle. Like you're free, you know, you're free from uh, anything of the past. And I, it's actually a crazy part of the story and it connects with exactly what we're talking about. And uh, talking about in this story, I, I, uh, I actually punched him in the chest that day. And I said, man, I said, there's no way that I can actually live free from sin. And uh, I jokingly say I'll prove to him that day by punching him. Um, but I began to search the scriptures and realize like, wow, like this is actually possible um, because I'm a new creation, uh, because of the truth of I'm the righteous of Christ and so on. And so, yeah, it's it's just a that that began to. And as I begin to receive God's love, I bought like one of my first messages was about the passion of the Christ. I used the passion of the Christ as my, my intro to the message. And so kind of this, this weaving of the love of Christ mixed with truth and seeing even these angers just and frustration start to, to leave my heart. So, yeah. That That's is miraculous. Helpful. And you know what I think about, and I, you know, I'm, I'm smiling as you're talking about anger, because really in our culture, and in East Texas in particular, I mean, men are given about one emotion that's okay to feel. You can feel angry, you know, and that you're a man if you feel angry. And, you know, so I, I think sometimes men in particular that deal with anger issues, often they're feeling a whole bunch of different things. You know, it could be that they're feeling low or they're feeling ashamed or they're feeling embarrassed. But the one emotion that a man is allowed to share is anger, you know, so what I what's so interesting about your story is part of your healing was for you to share for you to be able to receive the love of Christ, the compassion of Christ, of the affection of people for people, you know, when Christ makes a difference. And that was really that's part of your healing journey. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like you like you said, I would even say in the last year really i've started paying attention to my mo emotions even more i've been i didn't really say a whole lot about who i am i've, I've been married for almost eight years uh, i live here in dallas texas and got a nine month old now and uh but it it's like you said growing up in east texas and i i think this is for in general a lot of times for men uh is that anger is just kind of a, a normal emotion it's mm -hmm. a normal just Oh, okay. But when I started, like I said, I begin to read in the word and I begin to say like, this is not like, this is not normal. Like Jesus, because of what he did on the cross and because I'm in him, he's, he's actually taken that from me so that I can be full of love and I can be full of compassion and forgiving and not so quick, quick tempered. <laughs> and, uh, and so, um, but yeah, it's even in the last year, I've, I've started uh, realizing like, oh, okay, I'm not just feeling anger, I'm, I'm, I'm stressed about something. I'm, uh, mm -hmm. And then ultimately bringing all of these things to the Lord. Um, and does that mean I'm perfect today? No. But I even Hannah would say even in the last eight years, I'm not the same guy I was when we first got married, you know, uh, and it's because of this love that I keep receiving and keep bringing it to the Lord. Uh, and saying, God, like, I believe it's possible to look like you. And that, that kind of goes to the journey of when college, this friend of mine, he's like, you know, trying to encourage me that walking and imitating Christ, Ephesians 5, 1, you be therefore imitators of Christ. Like it's, it's something in the word and it's something that's possible. Uh, and 
And even like I said, and then and I would say a couple of years after that situation, my friend kept kind of, kind of encouraging it. But you know, when you're in college, you're young, and you're uh, you're also all making poor decisions. Though you're seeking the Lord to the best you know how. Um, and we kind of got connected to a guy that really was walking the walk and preaching it at the same time. And for me, I had that friend that was saying, "Hey, you know, you don't have to." Uh, even with sexual addiction, uh, that's even part of my healing as well. I was addicted to pornography, uh, got introduced to it at a young age. And, and that was uh, also when I gave my life to Christ, like I was just bound and, and just, that was actually a secret sin. Like very few people knew that I was struggling with that. And, and to be honest, even growing up, and the culture to some degree, it's just kind of normal. And even today, you know, we, we normalize it because it, so many people do struggle with that in today's culture. Um, but once again, I, I don't think I believe that I could actually be free from that. I remember actually had a mentor that was kind of discipling me when I was first saved and he made a comment, you know, he's like, you know, you're just, you're always going to struggle with this. He's like, he was an older guy in his seventies. And he, he's like, you know, even I've got what, you know, different resources to kind of protect me when I get on my computer, so my wife knows and, and something in my heart was like, I actually, even then I was like, I think I don't, if the gospel has power, I'm, I don't have to struggle with this the rest of my life. Like, and, mm -hmm. and then, like I said, I got, we got connected to this guy that wasn't just talking about it, but he was living it. You know, when you can sense it when someone's talking, uh, and it uh, is, is um, I, th I don't know who, who is quoted for this. I don't know if it's a Braveheart quote or uh, something else, or I have no clue, but you know, it says free people, free people, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah. You know, it is such an epidemic and you know, it used to be very difficult for people to get pornography in their hands. You know, they'd have to go to a drugstore, they'd have to go to the counter They'd have to ask for the magazines that were kind of in the back, you know, and then it, it, it was difficult. But now every phone, every computer and even even things like movie resources, you can be watching a movie and all of a sudden there's a pornographic scene that's on it. And, and I've seen a rise in addiction for women. It's not just men that are struggling. A lot of women struggle with pornographic addiction. And, and I do think our world tries to normalize it, tries to say it's just fine. And yet the ravages that it does for a person's soul and the confidence that it steals in terms of your walk with Jesus you know, what did you see, you know, as you have gained freedom and victory in that, that area, how did that change your relationship with Jesus and, and just even your walk with the Lord? Yeah, you know, a story with that is I actually remember, this is before I was in college, just when I was first saved, and I was really seeking the Lord. And, and I remember uh, one night, a, a friend of mine called me, and he was he was drunk. Um, he, mm -hmm. he randomly would call people, you know, and start confessing sin, you know, and this was like 2 AM in the morning. I remember that night he called me randomly. He typically didn't call me. He called other people and he confessed his sin. And I personally was struggling. Uh, I was in, seeking the Lord, but I was in bondage. And, uh, I remember my heart was convicted. And so that night actually, I went to the, the shower and grabbed a bar of soap, a, a fresh bar of soap, and I scrubbed it through that entire bar of soap until it was completely gone. And the whole time I did that, I heard a voice, and it was the voice of the Holy Spirit, and he was saying, Wade, you're already clean. And I didn't know the scriptures as well as I do now, but I was just like, I, I sure don't feel clean. I feel dirty. I feel, I feel you know, as an, an outcast in my sin. But the whole time, I remember that night, I heard a voice saying, Wade, you're already clean. You're already clean. And I look back on that moment because it, it marked me in the fact that because of the blood of Jesus, I'm already clean. And mm -hmm. it, it's been a memory of mine for years. And I would go back to it. And then when I was right out of college, 
I kind of, I said, Jesus uh, is what I was talking about earlier. I said, God, I said, the gospel is full of power. Um, mm -hmm. And I need your power in my life. And did that mean I just fell on the floor and, you know, the Lord delivered me that night? No. And I know the Lord does that with people. And uh, for me, though, it was, there's, um, there's an old hymn. It says, you look to the cross and the things of the world fade away. And, uh, and I don't remember, you know, there's guys that I disciple now and they talk about, you know, this, it's been two years since I've been clean. I remember the date. I remember the moment. I don't remember the date. I don't remember the moment. I just know when I was about 22 years old, I've, I've never had an issue since. And I remember where I was living and the season I was in and the conversations I had with the Lord. And I just asked the Lord, I said, God, I need your power in my life. I'm going to keep, there's another Bible verse says you, you know, if you keep your eyes single, your whole body will be filled with light. And, uh, and like you said, my confidence begin to shift drastically. I, and what I do, you know, I have a desire to activate people in the work of evangelism. And I think, you know, what I've seen in my own life is that there, there, there are times in my past, especially when I was early on as a believer, I wasn't, focus on reaching others as much because my conscience was violated a lot of times uh your your ability to minister if your heart if you're keeping your heart pure i know that god will use you no matter what like he loves people and even in that season of my life i saw when i was struggling i i saw a lady with blind eyes be healed that hadn't seen in 37 years i prayed for her in a baptist church parking lot and the lord touched her and it was it was nuts. And it was actually a very convicting moment about three months later. I, I got, that's where I actually, I stepped into freedom because I was like, wow, like God's going to use me. Um, mm -hmm. and, and he's going to use me. Like, there's no question. He's going to, he's going to so, use you when you obey his word, lay hands on the sick, believe in your heart, you know, profess it. And then God heals them. It's, it's God that's doing it. And he'll use you, but the conviction of your heart had to do with the fact that here God used you in a mighty miracle, and yet your heart still needed healing. Yeah, it was a total total shift, and uh, you know, there's a there's a proverb I, I that has literally transformed the way I I minister to people when I'm scared to death to talk to somebody or. I just don't feel like it or whatever. It's, it's in Proverbs 28, one, it says the righteous are as bold as a lion and the wicked flee the no one pursues them. And, and I've seen it when I, I, and I believe the courage that I walk in a lot of times because, you know, people may say, Oh, it's your personality or whatever, but I believe it's the understanding of righteousness. Like the more that I, that you believe that you're righteous and you're the righteous of Christ, you start to see freedom. You know, you, you see uh, what scripture talks about that boldness, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, like I said, I, I know that there was moments where my conscience was violated and I needed the blood of Jesus to cleanse my conscience. I needed the blood of Jesus to help me walk this thing out. Um, but as I actually begin to receive that and I actually begin to believe I was the righteous of Christ, I walked in righteousness. Um, I walked in confidence. Uh, and as I walked in that confidence, you know, I walked in greater boldness. And, you know, it's even, I gave an analogy the other day, you know, it's just like, if, if I was walking around and, and I was aware that my clothes stunk and they hadn't been washed in a few days, <laughs> I walk around in, in a lack of confidence. You know, I, I don't want to be in a certain room with certain people or, you know, I don't know if I want to speak up and, and, you know, when I'm talking to certain people, but if I've got a new pair of clothes, I've got a new pair of shoes, you know, I, I walk differently. I feel confident around different people. Um, and, you know, because you, you know, that you, you look good, you know, that you, you, you know, smell fine or whatever. <laughs> and I believe that's just like the robe of righteousness, you know, like when we see, receive the robe of righteousness, we walk differently. We talk differently. And so it's, it's that inward work of the heart of what God's doing, because that's what God's after, right? Mm -hmm. He's, he's after the inward man, the inward heart of the spirit of a man. And, uh, and so that's really been a part of my journey, you know, because, 
I could, you know, and a lot of times I do, I spend a lot of time sharing testimonies and the works of God and, uh, and activating people to do that. But something even as I've been in this transition out of time to revive and starting my own ministries, I'm really trying to, as I activate people, I want to spend a little bit of time just helping people understand the inward man. So anyways, that's a little bit about uh, that journey. Well, I'm, I'm grateful. And one thing I love about the ministry that you've been walking in with Christ reward is that you do walk in that boldness and you compel others to walk in that boldness. And I, I understand what you're talking about boldness too, because it's something for me, it's like when boldness comes upon me, it's like an anointing of the Holy Spirit that the spirit of God will make you bold, whether or not your personality is that or not, because he comes in bold as a lion. So I appreciate that. And one thing you do is that you have picked up the cross and you have carried the cross and you've walked with it. And can you just share with me, what was it that Jesus did? Because I know you don't just do that. You know, this is no small cross. This is not something that you did spur of the moment. This was something that God called you to do. So how did he call you? And what has been um, the activating that has happened through your ministry? Yeah, for sure. You know, I one one part I would say is kind of my ministry is uh, just simply outreach, and uh, it's it's going out there and reaching out to the lost, and and part of that's carrying a twelve foot cross, and uh, like Sue said, it's nothing small, and and uh, obviously there are people that have carried the cross around the world, and God is using those people, and and um, you know I I'm gonna tell another story. I think stories are powerful, so I probably about, um, I don't know, eight years ago, maybe seven years ago, something around there. I was actually, there's another guy here in Dallas that used to do that was a part of his ministry. Like it's a part of mine, but he currently doesn't do it. Initially when I had reached out to him about doing what I was doing, I was like, Hey, do you happen to have a cross? And he's like, I don't even know where it's at. I haven't done that in years. And, uh, but when I did this with this guy, probably seven years ago and a friend of mine, we were, uh, walking uh, through the homosexual area of Dallas and uh, kind of um, it's just where all the gay bars are and we were carrying a, carrying a 12 foot cross and uh, we stopped at a gas station and a, a demon possessed guy came up to us and he you know was demon possessed he started yelling at us and cursing at us and, and at the very end he goes who do you think you are do you think you're Arthur Blessed I I never heard of Arthur Blessed in my life. Uh, for those that are listening, Arthur Blessed say, uh, and Sue, I'm sure maybe you probably know who Arthur is, but you know, he's carried the cross around the whole world. Um, so I go home and I Googling Arthur Blessed, find a documentary about this guy <laughs> who carried the cross around the world. And uh, and so God used a demon possessed person seven years ago to introduce me about this, this guy who's got these, you know, he's been arrested something like 28 times. It's just, it's just wild how the God, God used him. Well, Fast forward seven years later to, to October of 2021, and even before that, January of 2021, I was sitting on my front porch just praying, and I was asking the Lord what he was saying, and um, he, you know, during that time, I was actually carrying the cross about once a month down Harry Hines, which is a, there's an area here in Dallas that it's, it's known for sex trafficking and all kinds of uh, prostitution and stuff, and um so I, I would just carry it once a month through that kind of area and through the clubs. And, and it's a really great tool just to, you know, it makes it clear what your motive is. You know, this dude's just walking through the streets with the cross. It's not some guy walking down the street. And so uh, initially when the Lord even told me to do that, I was like, all right, I'm officially a nutso. Um, I, I like doing, <laughs> I, you know, I, I like doing one-on-one -on -one evangelism and, and, and you know, I'd give me an opportunity to train some people or you know throw me in front of a school or a stadium event but start carrying a cross down the street I'm, I'm officially a, a weirdo and uh and um so anyways 
as I began to pray and I was doing that once a month, I felt like he said, you need to carry it for a month through the city of Dallas. And, uh, and so I just started making a plan, mapped it out, got a videographer involved and we just, uh, carried it every day, uh, from pretty much every day. There was two days where we didn't, but for 29 days, carried it through the city of Dallas, 29 different areas. And, and, uh, and so it was just something that the Lord had led. And so, um, you know, I, I wasn't sure what the next steps were, uh, literally, you know, I literally took it one step at a time. Uh, but, uh, even now I'm, I, I've done it here and there. I carried occasionally, uh, I take some short-term, uh, mission trips here in the United States and I'll carry it with me occasionally, but the next kind of step I will be taking is in June. Uh, I plan to carry it at least, at least seven days through the city of New York city hit seven different areas. And so, uh, it's just something that the Lord is, you know, I, I don't know if the Lord's just like, okay, you have a willing heart and, um, putting this in, you know, I'm just looking for a willing vessel. That's looking to full, look foolish. And I'm the lucky winner. Um, and I've got the willing heart. Uh, I'm not sure, but, uh, you know, I would even say during all that, like, I would say that I, I don't really deal, deal with the fear of man a whole lot, but as I initially stepped out to do that, uh, back in October of 2021, there was kind of a fear of like, what are people going to think of me? You know, uh, what, what's he doing with his life? Uh, I actually, after it was all over, I ran into an old college roommate and, and he was like, what, what you been up to these days? I was like, well, uh, the last month I carried a cross to the city of Dallas. And I don't know what he thought, you know, like, <laughs> wow, well, is, that what, is that what you're doing with your degree? You know, like, oh, okay. um, you know, so, uh, anyways. what I, what I love and, you know, for listeners to know, I've walked with Wade for a couple years and he is a man of God and he is an evangelist. I mean, really, that's part of the anointing. And everyone that hangs around Wade ends up being encouraged, inspired, motivated, and challenged to walk in, I would say, healing evangelists, that the pro all of the gifts of the Holy Spirit are incorporated. And what I love about what you're saying in terms of carrying the cross is that basically you've been willing to be a fool for Christ's sake and that you listen to the still small voice. And I want you to know that there's some great men and women of God that go before you. And one of them, if you're a reader of evangelism or of revivals, there's a book called Reese Howells, R-E-E-S. H-O-W-E-L-S. He was instrumental in the revival in Wales. And one of the things that God told him to do is to become anti-cultural. And during that day, everyone wear, wore hats. It was a sign of honor and respect to wear hats. But God required him to not wear a hat. And it was a big deal in that culture. But part of what God was doing was requiring him to listen to his voice rather than man's voice. You know, so what you're doing, Wade, you're in a whole line of great men and women of God who have learned to fear the Lord more than fear man. And so thank you. Thank you for your obedience and thank you for your step of faith and and thank you for creating a context for people because I've been around the people that you're motivating and that you're impacting. And those people have been changed through the process of not just being the church inside the walls, but being the church in everyday life outside the walls. So thank you for just all that you've done to mobilize mission not only in Dallas, but in other cities. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, even today I was praying and I think it's Psalm 22 or somewhere in there. It talks about Psalm 22 about how we are able to give God praise mm -hmm. because of what he's done, you know, and it's always just that it's truly the grace of God. What does Paul say? You know, in first Corinthians, he says, I, I labor and I labor hard and but it's all by the grace of god and 
Uh, and so it's just recognizing and being grateful for the grace, trying to, you know, as I would say, is trying to access the, access the full access of the grace that God has upon my life. Even if that means carrying a cross or, you know, whatever, you know, and, and so, uh, and, and in, and in the process of impacting others. And, and like you said, that's, that's the ultimate part of my desire. Not, I, I wouldn't say the ultimate, but it is a definite passion of mine. I've seen people, you know, not just go to church on Sunday or Wednesday or Tuesday or mm-hmm. go to a prayer time, but then to take what they're praying and reading and, and live this out courageously and boldly and, and confidently. And so, uh, yeah, it's always encouraging to hear lives are being impacted. Yeah. And listener, um, you may be coming from different nations or there's 135 (laughs) nations on the Healing Rain podcast or different cities. And I think you should know that this is something that he's helping to mobilize into different areas. And so how can they get a hold of you if they want to get a hold of your ministry? Yeah, for sure. The ministry is Christ Reward. Uh, and you can just, uh, you know, the website's ChristReward.com. Uh, and mm-hmm. uh, we also have a video website called ChristReward.tv. And so it's just Christ Reward, you know, no S. Uh, the other ministry is called Christ Reward. Uh, and then <laughs> also, uh, so that's, that's the way. And then also my emails. I, I'm never afraid of throwing out my email and seeing as, as the Lord leads. So that's W Aaron, W A A R O N at christreward.com and uh, people can shoot me an email and you know mm-hmm. god's opening up an opportunity to train some people uh mm-hmm. that's always my desire I, I talk to churches often about ways to train their people and mobilize them and then uh even have a devotional right now that i'm i'm releasing along with a website that's a seven week devotional like i said exactly what i, I shared today uh is about it's really the first 10 days of receiving uh from the lord i I took the concept of how from easter to pentecost which is 50 days uh and there's actually sue that's how you kind of got connected to time to revive was a 50-day outreach Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. and in those 50 days back in that was 2017 about close to 3,000 people gave their lives to the lord Mm -hmm. and uh it was actually an idea through a friend of mine but ultimately at the end of the day it's from scripture (laughs) uh Mm -hmm. the 50-day idea uh but those 50 days, the first 40, it says in Acts 1, it says that Jesus presented himself alive uh, with, with un, just, there was proof showing that he was who he was, you know, uh, and then it says for 10 days, they set an up room and then the Holy Spirit came. So I took that idea, my devotional, it's called the reward of the lamb. Uh, you can get that on Amazon. You can get it uh, wherever. Um I know for sure Amazon, uh, and then it goes along with ChristWord.tv. But the first, I flipped it instead of ten days at the end receiving. I, I took the first ten days of of receiving that you're loved by God, you're the righteous of Christ, uh, you're doing it by the grace of God. And then the next forty is a progression of uh, praying for people, sharing your testimony, sharing the gospel, praying for the sick. You know, different ways to present the gospel. Uh, everything from just you know Jesus is spend spend time with Jesus as your friend and then go talk to someone about Jesus being your friend Um, Mm -hmm. uh, and so just trying to really get people activated and uh, demystify the the fears of evangelism and Mm -hmm. um, and so that's that's really my heart well thank you thank you for the heart work that you've allowed Jesus to heal your heart and how I I love this devotional discipleship that you're beginning. Um, So we'll also include that in the show notes. And if you were talking to someone today and they are needing healing, healing from anger or healing from, you know, addiction to pornography or healing in any area in their life, what would you say to them? What would be some of the first steps that you would say to them? Yeah, I think the the simplest thing is, is that, like I mentioned, if your eye is single, your whole body is full of light. And in that hymn, you look to the cross and the things of the world fade away. Or you look to Jesus and the things of the world fade away. And I think mm-hmm. the simplest thing I would say is just look 
to Jesus. And I believe that comes through the form of the scriptures. Uh, and I actually told this to somebody yesterday. It's one thing to memorize scriptures, but it's another thing to know Jesus. Um, mm -hmm. I, I can memorize a scripture because I, I have a good intellectual brain, you know, but it's another thing to encounter Jesus through the scriptures. And, and so, and then I think it comes through worship. Um, and so I think it's just saying, okay, Jesus, you're the goal. And, and it's saying, Jesus, I believe it's possible because what you believe you will manifest and, yeah. uh, you, you'll, you'll display in your life. Like, because I believe that Jesus is a healer, I'll pray for people to be sick. I mean, people that are sick, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> you know, uh, no, no, I'm not putting curses on people, uh, but, uh, you know, we'll see if God can heal you. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I believe that he's a healer. So I, I pray for them to be healed. Yeah. So I just yeah. encourage people to say it is possible to look like Jesus. So I'm going to look to him and say, he's my example. Um, even my, and, and don't look back. Luke, Luke 9, 62 says, don't look back for anyone that looks back. is not fit for the kingdom of God. And I think sometimes you can get caught up and become very sin conscious of the last time you stumbled or the last time, whatever, maybe whatever the, the journey is, um, where, you know, ultimately what Jesus is trying to get at is you need to press forward, advance forward. Um, and mm -hmm. it's, it's seeing him, uh, staying as, as some people would say, it's staying behind your rabbi, staying behind your teacher, being those footprints. Uh, mm -hmm. and yeah, because that, that for me, I'm, I'm always saying, okay, today that's the goal is to look like him and it's possible and anything less I need to repent of. And that's what I would say is because I, I think even those that are listening, sometimes you can begin to believe the mm -hmm. lie that it's not possible. Mm -hmm because of your past or because even people maybe you know or maybe you're you've been in a church and there's been uh sexual failure of a leader or mm -hmm. or different things and all of a sudden you you begin to question if it's actually possible because well this person was such a good person well they're not jesus and uh and jesus he walked this thing out and so i'm really saying okay i'm gonna i'm gonna focus on him and know that I can look like him and talk like him. And, and um, yeah, so that's, that's what I would encourage. That's really helpful. And listeners, if you haven't heard this before, neuroscience has studied, you have about 70,000 thoughts in a day. And what they've studied is that most people spend about 90% of those thoughts on the past. And about 50% of the thoughts about the past aren't even true. And you can see how that could keep you in a cycle of sin. And yet, sometimes the way forward is to focus on Jesus in front of you. And if you can shift your thoughts to focusing on Jesus in your words and your actions by the power of, of Jesus, it's really much simpler then you make it in your mind because Jesus is the one that sets you free. Yeah. That's so amazing. I, I didn't know that stat. That's pretty, that's pretty interesting. I'd like to look yeah. at that. You know, you know, part of what they've studied is that one of the changes ways to change your thinking has to do with what comes out of your mouth, what comes out of your mouth is like a magnet for your thoughts so that one of the ways to change the focus is on beginning to speak the word or speak the promises of god and i didn't know the stats either but every time that god has transitioned me into a new season part of that has been through declarative prayer you know taking the bible reading the red and praying the red you know, coming into agreement with your words and your thoughts and your deeds with the truth of what God wants you to do. And I, I just want to commend Wade Aaron to you as an evangelist. Um, you may be a pastor that's listening to this. We have quite a few pastors that listen to Healing Rain. And, and really, he's one of the people that he can come alongside you and your ministry and help to equip those in your body of how to activate 
and live out the call to be the church outside of the walls. Yeah. Amen. I, that's my desire. And, you know, obviously I've got the outreach portion of what I'm doing, but then there's the teaching and equipping and uh, yeah, we'd love to come alongside any church. Uh, all, one thing I offer is one day evangelism workshops and, uh, and it's kind of taking the devotional and teaching some of it. And then really there is a follow-up with the devotional and some of the stuff on the website. And so um, really have a heart for the church. Uh, I think the church is the answer in this hour. And, and so if you're a pastor, if you're a leader, uh, as uh, Sue mentioned, I worked with a ministry called Time to Revive, and uh, we work with all denominations. And so I've worked with all kinds of denominations and met with every, you know, just depending upon who's listening, I, there's a high chance I've probably met with someone in your denomination. And so, um, and I just think that at the end of the day, if we can agree upon the, the death, burial, and the resurrection of Christ, and that he's coming back, um, Hey, let's, let's work together. And I love to, to work with your people and uh, see what God will do. And, you know, I, even a young guy that I've discipled for the last three years, he goes to a church and, you know, I told him, I, I shared with him, I said, Hey, I'd love to, to do a training with your church. And he's like, well, what if only five or six people showed up? I said, that's okay. I, I believe in you, you know, and I believe that if we take those five or six people and God lights them on fire in a day and it was worth my time. And so whether it's a hundred people or whatever, I believe that yeah. God, uh, he, he's not always concerned about the, 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 you know, the vastness, but he's looking for, uh, individual lives that will then impact other individual lives. Yeah. And to become that you may be a listener and you're not a pastor, but here's the reality. You can become that right now. I remember standing up to a call, a challenge. I, I was a pastor, but sometimes pastors get focused on inside. And I felt called of the Lord <laughs> that I was to give my time outside of the walls and to become a secret agent. And, you know, as a, a young woman in ministry, that often meant um, going to a variety of places and leading people to Jesus, you know, praying for the sick, mobilizing. And, and I think that heart decision just comes inside of you where you are willing to be used in any type of situation. And what I will promise you, if you begin to activate your faith in that way, that the more you give out, the more that God will give in. So thank you, Wade. Thank you for your message, your heart, your ministry. You're making an impact in the next generation. Amen. Thanks for having me today. And uh, bless you guys. So as you've listened to Healing Rain, maybe you want to be activated in your faith to be the church outside the walls. I want to encourage you. Maybe God's calling you to lead a Bible study. Maybe God's calling you to go to your neighbor's house. Maybe he's calling you to be bold and carry a cross down the streets. Whatever Jesus calls you to do, I want to challenge you to fear God and not man. Well, thanks for hanging out with us on Healing Rain. And may the joy of Jesus fill your heart.